continuing in the what you should be doing for your garden I'm in zone 6b and today is January 25th and I'm a couple days late according to my growing calendar I should have done this on January 21st but the reason why I'm saying that is because those are give or take days so just close to that date is sufficient here is a collection of my seeds from my seed inventory. I have some growing trays with an insert. This is a 72 cell insert. These are 10 by 20 trays. I have a 10 by 20 heat mat. Potting soil. Sometimes I use potting soil. Sometimes I use whatever's on hand at the time I need it. That could be compost with a soil mixture that I've dug up out of the yard. Um, I already have the potting soil moistened in a bowl ready to go. And I have the two variety of seeds that I'm going to be planting. A sweet Spanish yellow Utah Jumbo, which I have some that were packaged for 2016 and some for 2019. And then I have these Victory Garden Red Burgundy Onions. You also want some tweezers. Makes it a whole lot easier. So the heat mat, the trays, the soil, the seeds. Let me go ahead and put these seeds back in the freezer and we'll get started. So give me just a minute. All right, let me pull my sleeves up here. One thing I want to show you, because I got asked this already, how do you know that your soil is ready to go? When you're starting seeds, you generally want a light, fluffy soil. Can you see what I mean there? It's a light soil. It crumbles real easy. You want it to be moist. How moist? If I grab this soil and squeeze with all my might, I can't wring water out of it. But you see how it clumped up? Then it breaks apart really easy. That's how you know you want it to be moist. You don't want it to be saturated or soaked. If it's saturated or soaked, then your seed will mostly just rot. Um, what I usually do is I just put the soil right in the tray, just kind of wiggle it around a little bit so it settles down. I don't get too crazy about being absolutely perfect with it. Nature is not perfect when it grows stuff. Why should I be? I'm actually on a utility table that I put in my kitchen this time of year, starting about the end of January until probably May. I will have all kinds of things growing either in these trays or in an arrow garden with a seed starting kit. And while I actually just mentioned the arrow garden, how do I know which one I do in the arrow garden? How do I know which ones I do in the trays? Good question. Glad you asked. The way that I know is if it's something that I'm going to be planting a whole lot of, like onions, I start them in these trays. If it's something I'm only going to be planting maybe 10 of, I start in the arrow garden. Now the arrow garden seed starting tray, I think it holds 50 seeds, but I would never want to use the arrow garden to tie up entirely to one plant. As you can see, I basically just brush it around, get rid of the excess soil, just scrape it right onto the table because this table makes it really easy just to clean it right up. So once I have that done, I usually take and get a pencil or an ink pen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put me just a small dimple hole in each one of these. Don't have to be very big. Don't have to be very deep. Just needs to be something that will hold the seed and keep it from rolling around. Now some people will tell you you can plant three or four seeds in each one of these and they'll make 
three or four separate holes. I don't do that. I put two or three seeds in one hole because I am lazy. And it's worked for years. I mean, when Mother Nature plants stuff, she don't take and make a separate hole for each seed. Why should I? So what I do is I pour them out on my hand, a few, just like that. Can you see it? Then I take, not that pair, because it's not my favorite pair, <laughs> this pair. I take some tweezers to pick the seeds up, because can you see how small those are? I'm going to drop however many I pick up at once, usually about two or three seeds, into each one of these holes. Okay, so now that I've got all the holes filled with seeds, a lot of people will take and just rub it in. I don't usually do that. I take just a little bit more soil and put on top. And then I come over and I just kind of like pat it down a little bit. Now, if I see a place that looks like it's a, got a little bit, needs more soil, I'll go ahead and do that. But I don't really like, I don't really take and like, move, try to move the soil around. All I want to do is cover the seeds up. Does that make sense? So I'm not really spreading the soil around I just want to cover the seeds up that are in those holes and you can tell pretty easily by looking at which ones are covered and which ones are not once that's done I have a spray bottle with water in it and I just give them a spritz right on top And that might identify a few more places that need a little bit more soil. Because usually what happens when you spritz them, the soil will sink down just a little bit. So if you spritz a place that didn't have enough soil to begin with, the soil kind of sinks down and it makes it pretty obvious. Now the next thing I do you can get those plastic dome lids for these, but what I use is just plain old plastic wrap. Plastic wrap keeps the soil from drying out, and it's cheap. Those dome lids are friggin' expensive. Work smarter, not harder. Just make it the right length. Chop that off. Come up here, lay it down. Hope and pray I made it the right length, because now I'm starting to wonder. You get the idea though, right? Yes, no, maybe. I almost cut it a little too short, but I'm going to make it work. Something like that. Now that keeps my soil from drying out. It was cheap, it was economical. The next thing I do, you can buy them labels if you want, and put a label on there what it is. I take a piece of 5 by seven notebook and I put on there what it is. What was this? Sweet Spanish Yellow. Sweet Spanish Yellow Onion. And today's date, January 25th. So that way I know when I planted it. Now, over where my heat mat's at, I just put that label right under the heat mat. See that? You probably didn't see it because this is blocking it. Then I set the heat mat right on top of it. So here's my label. 
my heat mat is under the tray, then I plug the tray in, or the heat mat in. All there is to it, rinse and repeat for the next one. The next one is going to be red burgundy onions. There's actually a tip that I'm going to go ahead and show you that I almost forgot about. I got a gallon Ziploc bag, right? You can see I put those two onion packets in there. And right on the label of that, I write, Done 2020. Done. Actually, it's a 2021. 2021. So that way I know I've already planted those seeds. Now this goes in the freezer, and when I get these done, these other seeds done, they will go in there too. Matter of fact, as the year goes on, all the seeds I planted this year will be in here. Now what that does is, one, that reminds me what I already planted so I don't do it twice. And the other thing is, too, if I get a batch of onions, let's say these come up and they sprout and they're doing really good, but they don't produce very well, I can go back and say I'm not going to use these onions anymore and maybe I'll toss those seeds out or something. Don't happen very often but it does happen every now and then where you get a bad batch of seeds. They just don't germinate or something to that effect. All my seeds are always kept in the freezer so now those are in the freezer. Now I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do the next batch of seeds. Now I've already got the soil done but I'm probably going to run out of soil. All I want to do, or maybe not, who knows, fill this up. I'm not really packing it in. I'm basically letting the soil just fall into the hole and then rest there. I'm not like trying to force it down in there. Not sure where that video ended at, but let me tell you something. If I ever record a YouTube video where my camera battery doesn't die and shut off mid-recording, if that ever happens where I record a video and my camera doesn't shut off and you see it on YouTube, call 911 and dispatch an ambulance out here to pick me up because I probably had a heart attack. What I'm actually going to do is I need some soil to cover up these seeds when I dump them in there. I don't need a lot, probably way more than I need. And I'll put some water in here. Yep. Not too dry, not too wet. Back to what we're doing. So now I've got my red burgundy onions. These seeds come from Victory Gardens. I bought them online, I think it was 2016, 2017. And they're made to do a seed to seed process. They're not really made to grow a garden with what you're provided. They're really made to make more seeds from the seeds they give you. So with that being said, I have to make sure I let these go to seed. These are the only seeds I have of this variety and if they grow good and taste good, I want them to go to seed. So I'm going to go ahead and plant these and I'm really going to hope and pray I got a few left over just in case these fail. I have actually had really good luck out of all the seeds. I think they say at least 85% germination. I've only had a couple of seeds out of the several hundred that I planted over the years that didn't, that didn't make it. So I would say, you know, in my history, it's a little better than 85%. Now these seeds are a little bit bigger and I'm just going to oddball do these one at a time. I'll tell you what's really good for doing small seeds, I kind of wish I had it in the house, is my seeding square scooper. That little seed tool that it comes with, man, it is like amazing for tiny seeds. Y'all, that cancer just totally messed up my memory. You couldn't even imagine. I forget the names of things. I forget the names of people. 
I forget commands that I do on my computer that I run every day for years. There we go. All right. Going to do the same thing again where I'm not going to like, you know, I just want to sprinkle some soil on the tops of these to cover the holes up. Now, I've seen on uh, YouTube where a lot of ple people that are doing, like, you know, planting stuff in high volumes for, like, farmer's markets, and they got those tools that cost, like, $800 or whatever stupid amount of money it is, where you basically load it up with seeds and give it a swipe, and it plants each hole perfectly with one seed in each hole. If you're into that kind of perfection, go for it, but I am not. Again, I'm not really using my hand to do anything other than pat the soil down and make sure the hole's covered. Again, I'm going to spray it down, miss it. I know you're probably wondering, like, why are you missing that after you just put wet soil on it? And the reason being... I want the top layer to be a little bit heavier than the bottom layer. So if there's any air pockets, it'll kind of like fill it in on its own without me doing hardly anything. And again, we're going to cover it with our saran wrap. This time I'm going to make sure that I get enough. Because normally what I do is I tuck one end under slightly. To kind of like hold it in place while I pull on the other one. Funny story, my cat has gotten where, if I'm recording YouTube videos, he knows I won't bother him if he's doing something he's not supposed to be doing. So if he sees me recording YouTube videos, all of a sudden he's doing stuff he's not supposed to be doing. You can probably hear him. Alright. Again... We're going to go ahead and put a heat mat down. I know there's probably someone like, I don't have a heat mat. Well, you don't really need one. If you don't want to use a heat mat, if you ain't got one, don't use one. You don't have to. I like to use them. They do seem like that they cause whatever you plant on top of them to come up quicker. It makes sense. The inside of my house is only about 60 degrees 60 to 65 degrees these are red burgundy onions red burgundy onions and this is January 25th under the tray and there we go so that's how I do it. Now, what you want to do is, you'll notice on, let me bring this up here so you can see. You'll notice on this plastic, these white dots. That is moisture collecting on the underside of the plastic as it evaporates out of the soil. When you see that there's no white dots there. That means you need to pull the plastic back and add more water to it. Just spritz it with the sprayer like I've already been doing. That's all you got to do. And probably about, I think these take about, uh, about four to seven days. You'll see sprouts starting to come up. As soon as you see the sprouts coming up, you take the saran wrap entirely off and you water them like a normal plant because once they sprouted they're a normal plant but that pretty much right there wraps up exactly how i do seeds this is what you should be doing the end of january for zone 6b and uh i'll bring you around i think it's next week or the week after i got more stuff to do and i'll probably go over it too as always thanks for watching God bless you, God bless your families, God bless your homestead, and good luck on your 2021 gardens. Don't forget to get outside and enjoy yourself. Much love, everybody. Thanks for the love and support. The whole time I've been having cancer, 
Thanks for being understanding about my voice not being as clear as it should be. Thanks for everything.